Sairam students and welcome back in this session. Today we will be doing a chapter from Beehive that is lesson 9. The Bond of Love written by Kenneth Anderson. So first we'll learn something about the author. Kenneth Douglas Stuart Anderson was an India born British writer and hunter. So he was born in India but a British writer and also a hunter. He wrote books about his adventures in the jungles of South India. His love for the inhabitants of the Indian jungle led him to big game hunting and to writing real life adventure stories. So he used to write a lot of real life stories and as he was really fond of hunting too. He often went into the jungle alone and unarmed to meditate and enjoy the beauty of untouched nature. So he used to go into the jungle alone without any arms with him and enjoy the beauty of nature. Kenneth Anderson became well acquainted with many jungle folk from various aboriginal tribes. Some of his famous books include Nine Man Eaters and One Rogue, Man Eaters and Jungle Killers, The Call of the Man Eater. This is the jungle. So everything related to adventure and hunting was included in his books. So students now moving ahead with what the theme of this particular lesson, The Bond of Love is. It is a story of love and affection between a human being and an animal. The bond of love is about the emotional bond which the author's wife and her pet bear share between them. So it's a story uh, related to the love and affection between a human being and an animal. The author rescued the baby bear in an accident and gifted it to his wife. After that, they were bonding like he was their child and the author's wife loves him a lot. So we will see what kind of love and affection and bonding both these had in this story. Now, who are the main characters in the story? Uh, first, we have the narrator. He found a sloth bear and gifted it to his wife. Then we have the narrator's wife. She was a kind woman who loved the bear a lot and treated it like her own child. Okay. Then we have Bruno. This is the sloth bear whom the narrator found and gifted to his wife. We have the curator that is a zookeeper who took care of Bruno at the zoo and informed the narrator's wife about its condition. And we also have the superintendent, a very kind-hearted man who allowed the narrator's wife to take Bruno with her. So these are the main characters in this story. So now uh, let's begin with the lesson. Can there be love and friendship between human beings and wild animals? Let's read a fascinating account of an orphaned sloth bear that was rescued by the author. So this is about how the author brought this bear to his, into his family. What are sloth bears? Sloth bears inhabit forested areas including the tropical rainforests of India and grasslands at lower elevations. Sloth bears have very shaggy hair and long muzzles. You can see the picture how they look very furry creatures. Using their claws to dig 
they can then use their lips to form a tube which can go deep into the ground or into hard to reach areas like dead trees for their food their main food is termites you can hear them suck up their food from several feet away so they dig into the ground very deep and uh, get their food so their main food is the termites or the white ants that we know about so students let's begin with the uh, lesson i will begin with bruno my wife's pet sloth bear i got him for her by accident two years ago we were passing through the sugarcane fields near mysore so here we have the narrator the author narrating the story so that is why it's in the first person that is i okay now they had gone hunting through the sugarcane fields near mysore people were driving away the wild pigs from the fields by shooting at them some were shot and some escaped we thought that everything was over when suddenly a black sloth bear came out panting in the hot sun the people were driving the pigs out of the fields so at that time this group along with the narrator they saw this black sloth bear coming out now i will not shoot a sloth bear wantonly but unfortunately for the poor beast one of my companions did not feel that way about it and promptly shot the bear on the spot so wanton mean early uh, means for no good reason so he the narrator was not very much interested in killing that or shooting that bear but unfortunately one of his companions shot the bear as we watched the fallen animal we were surprised to see that the black fur on its back moved and left the prostrate body so prostrate body means that is the body is lying on the ground facing downwards okay it was in a uh, straight position because the animal was killed but they were surprised to see that the black fur on its back was moving though the body was in uh, lying down on the ground then we saw it was a baby bear that had been riding on its mother's back when the sudden shot had killed her the little creature ran round its prostrate parent making a pitiful noise so finally they saw that it was the baby bear which was on the mother's back the mother the bear that was shot dead so this poor creature this baby bear was going around its mother's body the prostrate body of the mother bear i ran up to it to attempt a capture it scooted into the sugar fake sugarcane field following it with my companions i was at last able to grab it by the scruff of its neck while it snapped and tried to scratch me with its long hooked claws so scooted means it ran away so when the narrator tried to go and capture it it ran away into the sugarcane fields and finally they were following it to grab it and he caught it by the back back of its neck however it scratched him with a long hooked claws we put it in one of the gunny bags we had brought and when i got back to bangalore i duly presented it to my wife she was delighted she at once put a colored ribbon around its neck and after discovering the cub was a boy she christened it bruno so they captured the bear and put it into a gunny bag 
and they carried it straight to Bangalore and the narrator here presented it to his wife. She was really excited and delighted and immediately tied a colored ribbon around its neck and named it Bruno. Christened it means it named it Bruno. Bruno soon took to drinking milk from a bottle. It was but a step further and within a very few days he started eating and drinking everything else. So they started by giving him milk in a bottle and whether in a very few days time it started eating everything. And everything is the right word for he ate porridge made from any ingredients, vegetables, fruit, nuts, meat, especially pork, curry and rice, regardless of condiments and chilies, bread, eggs, chocolates, sweets, pudding, ice cream, etc., etc. So condiments means the spices that are used for cooking food. So this Bruno, that is a sloth bear, ate everything like any other person was very fond of food. Tried to grab on anything that was available, that was edible. As for drink, milk, tea, coffee, lime juice, aerated water, buttermilk, beer, alcoholic liquor and in fact anything liquid. It all went down with relish. So in liquid form used to drink anything, any of these, even alcoholic liquor. So anything present in the liquid form, Bruno would love to relish it. The bear became very attached to our two Alsatian dogs and to all the children of the tenants living in our bungalow. He was left quite free in his younger days and spent his time in playing, running into the kitchen and going to sleep in our beds. So the family, they also had two Alsatian dogs, one of the breeds of dogs you may be knowing about. Also, this bear got very much fond of the children living uh, in the bungalow, the tenants, and was left quite free, was not tied up in the room was left free so he spent his time playing and running about all over the place. One day an accident befell him. I put down poison that is barium carbonate to kill the rats and mice that had got into my library. Bruno entered the library as he often did and he ate some of the poison. Paralysis set in to the extent that he could not stand on his feet. So what happened? Because he used to move around everywhere all over the house. One day there was an accident that took place. They had put some poison that is barium carbonate in the library to kill the rats and mice present there. And unfortunately Bruno entered there and he ate it up was not uh, was unknown to the fact that it was poison immediately he was paralyzed paralysis set in that he could not even stand but he dragged himself on his stumps to my wife who called me I guessed what had happened off I rushed in the car to the vet's residence a case of poisoning, tame bear, barium carbonate, what to do. So, however, the bear, uh, Bruno tried to drag himself out towards his wife, towards the narrator's wife. And finally, she understood what would have happened that she ha he had consumed this barium carbonate. So, they immediately rushed to the vet. Vet means the veterinary doctor the doctor for the animals and was in a position was not in a real position to explain so was speaking in all bits and pieces like case of poisoning the tame bear and so on and so forth out came his medical books 
and a feverish reference to index began. What poison did you say, sir? Barium carbonate? Ah, yes, barium salts. Ah, barium carbonate. Symptoms, paralysis, treatment, injections of. So now the uh, doctor took out all his medical books and tried to refer to them, finding out what would be the treatment for this, how to treat this kind of a situation where this bear had taken up the barium carbonate. So he was just telling that the symptoms was paralysis and treatment would be some kind of injections. Just a minute, sir. I'll bring my syringe and the medicine. A dash back to the car. Bruno still floundering about on his stumps, but clearly weakening rapidly, some vomiting, heavy breathing, with heaving flanks and gaping mouth. So floundering means was struggling to move on his feet. He was not able to move an inch. There was also other symptoms like he started vomiting, there was heavy breathing and his mouth was open. He was not able to take in the breath. The doctor had actually gone to bring his syringe and the medicine. Hold him everybody. In goes the hypodermic. Bruno squeals. 10 cc of the antidote enters his system without a drop being wasted. 10 minutes later, condition unchanged. Another 10 cc injected. So hypodermic means a long needle used to give an injection under the skin. Okay. So here the doctor gave him an injection and he was squealing. He was screaming because it was painful and they gave him around 10 cc of antidote. The injection was around 10 cc. But however, 10 minutes later, they found that the condition was the same. He had not improved at all. So there was another 10 cc injected into his body. 10 minutes later, breathing less stertorous, Bruno can move his arms and legs a little, although he cannot stand yet. 30 minutes later, Bruno gets up and has a great feed. So stertorous breathing means noisy breathing, like something like snoring. You are very uh, noisy breathing. So he was breathing that way earlier. But however, 10 minutes later that came down. He was getting back to normal. He could even move his arms and legs a little. However, he was not able to stand erect even then. But 30 minutes later, he was up and had a great feed and wanted to have something to eat. He wanted to eat. He looks at us disdainfully as much as to say, What's barium carbonate to a big black bear like me? Bruno is still eating. So disdainfully means showing some disrespect. Okay, he was least bothered as to what had actually happened, how much of trouble he had given to the author and his wife. So he gave such a look stare as if to say that this barium carbonate can do nothing to a big bear like me. And he was still eating. Bruno was still eating. Another time he found nearly one gallon of old engine oil which I had drained from the sump of the stood baker and was keeping as a weapon against the inroads of termites. He promptly drank the lot but it had no ill effects whatever. So there was another incident where the author had uh, drained out all the uh, engine oil from the tank of the Studebaker. This is an American car. Okay, he had taken out from the sump. Sump means the tank so that he could protect from the termites or the white ants. But 
this bruno drank up all that old engine oil however there was nothing that happened to him there were no ill effects whatsoever he was as fit as ever so now let's see students what happens after this what kind of incidents takes place with bruno and the narrator in our next class we will continue it in the next class go through the uh, lesson as much as is taught and we will do it in the next class now you will be taken to a link wherein you have to answer the questions and submit the same on that particular link thank you